Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon native tank. I just realized I've got a light burned out, which is why we're seeing so much of the glare and reflection from the tank behind me. But no matter, that's not what this video is going to be about. This video is going to be about total dissolved solids. I did a water change on this tank yesterday. I did a very big water change on this tank yesterday. And I shot a video talking about the dissolved solids in the tank. They were really high. They were over a thousand. Uh, it was like a thousand sixty-five or something like that. I did a massive water change, and on the other end of the water change, we only brought the TDS number down to about six hundred and forty, six hundred and thirty, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I got to wondering about what was raising the TDS like that. Nitrates will account for total dissolved solids, phosphates will account for total dissolved solids, but I checked those numbers, and while they were, you know, high for nitrates, they weren't anywhere near pushing a thousand parts per million, and I'm not really sure what would account for all of those dissolved solids, and I'm still not. I thought possibly it was the tannins in the tank. And that makes a certain amount of sense, but then I got to scratching my head a little bit because if we walk around here and have a look in this tank, this tank has a lot of tannins in it. This tank also has a total dissolved solid count right now of 130 parts per million. That is the same as my tap water. I've been going around the room, I've been checking all my tanks, I've been checking various water sources, and I've been trying to suss out why this one tank has such incredibly high dissolved solids in it, and I'm not really sure. So my RO water has 12 parts per million, which is right where it should be. That's where it normally sits, and that's about where my RO system should take it down to. My groundwater has about 60 parts per million in it, which this time of year is also about right. And more importantly, based on that 60 parts per million, once the water goes through my uh, treatment system, it comes out the other end at right around 135, 130 parts per million right in that neighborhood, which is what you should see if I started with around 60 parts per million. So all of that tells me that my TDS meter is working close enough. It may not be, you know, accurate enough for, for you know, real science, but for my purposes, it's within a couple of parts per million, and that's close enough. So why does this tank, with all of this huge amounts of tannins in it, still sit right where my tap water is. I did a big water change yesterday, but you can see it's no longer clear. So if all those tannins have built up in the water, why is the TDS the same as my tap water? Why aren't those tannins raising the TDS in this tank? I don't know. I can't account for that. I've gone around, I've made some checks on some of my other tanks. We'll have a look at those in a minute. But I did a really simple experiment. I took some tap water, 130 parts per million. I've been letting this tea bag soak in here for, I don't know, it's been maybe half an hour, 45 minutes now. We started at 130 parts per million. And we're now up to 360-ish, floating around there. But look at that water. I mean, that's crazy dark. So that's way, way darker than this water. Actually, let me see if I've got a bucket. Actually, hang on. Let me put you on pause for one moment. Look at that water right there. That's the tea that's been soaking with a tea bag in the water. And that's a scoop of water out of that tank. So you can see it's nowhere near as tea stained. So that makes sense as far as, you know, 130 parts per million. Uh, let's see if that's what it actually shows up 
here in the glass. That's what it was when I checked it a little while ago. So yeah, we're still sitting right around 130 parts per million. So that all seems to make sense. But then this tank, where the water is now almost clear, hold on, let's do the uh, before and after one more time so we can get a good look at how much tannin stained uh, that tank right there is, my native tank. So once again, have a look at the that water, as dark as that looks. That's what that is. And that's the water out of the native tank. So look how clear that looks by comparison. And look at those TDS. It's just ridiculous. 659. Or thereabouts. So why is that? What is jacking the TDS up in that tank so much? We just saw by looking at the tea bags in there, uh, or the one tea bag in there, that it did, you know, the, the tannins in that glass of, of water did go up. It went from my 130 parts per million tap water up to 300 and something, but that was really, really dark tea colored only, and that only raised it 200 parts per million. So we've got this water, that's noticeably dark. It's not like that glass of tea, but it's there's no increase in TDS at all. That's the same as my tap water that I put in there yesterday. And that wasn't even a hundred percent water change. So I mean there's obviously there's been water in this tank for a while now, and yet I'm still sitting at tap water levels. And then this tank down here that looks pretty clear. You know, my, my nitrates are probably 60 parts per million in that tank now we could go crazy and say 70 parts per million maybe how does that account for 600 parts per million total dissolved solids uh, this tank is one of my uh, lesser maintenance tanks I don't do a ton of water changes on this tank and we have 213 parts per million when I tested that right before we started this video uh, my t-bar tank here uh, this one is a pretty heavily stocked tank it's got that big old Pleco in there, 247 parts per million. This was one of my higher freshwater tanks. This one was all the way up. Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking of a different tank. This one was at 195. And this one hasn't had a water change in a week or more. And we're still under 200 parts per million in this tank. This is one of my more neglected tanks. We're looking at 354 parts per million in this tank. In this tank, it's a water change about once every six to eight weeks, maybe. Something like that. We're going to skip the brackish tank for a moment. We'll get back to that because brackish is a slightly different ballpark. 178. I did a water change on that one about a week ago. Got 341 in my quarantine tank. I don't remember the last time I did a water change on that. I topped it off. Actually, I did a water change on that. I don't know. It was a while ago, but that's that's a really rarely uh, changed tank, and there's so few animals in there. The, the food that I put in there probably doesn't get eaten, so that's not a very well-maintained tank. Not only is it neglected, it's not properly fed. There's always varying numbers of animals in it, and we're still looking at 341 parts per million in that tank. My also reasonably heavily stocked uh, 125 163 parts per million in this tank another one that doesn't get water changes very often but is not very heavily stocked at all we got 254 in here now this is a good one here this like never ever ever gets water changes every once in a while when the water is all the way down to here i'll put a couple gallons in just to bring it back up 623 parts per million in this tank that makes sense i also put crushed eggshells in there i had a cuddle bone in there um, I put stuff in there to raise the total dissolved solids. Now, I've done that in this tank, too. I've put some 
um, eggshells and I've put some, some um, poultry grit, but I've done that in other tanks. So why, again, why would this one be that high? I haven't yet tested the water hardness in this tank, but every time I have, it still tests as really, really soft. So I haven't put enough calcium or magnesium in here to raise it even up to one degree hardness. So I'm still at zero degrees hardness. I'm under 100 parts per million on nitrates. You know, phosphates, we can say maybe 20, 30 parts per million phosphates. We can't now even say that there's a lot of nitrates. I mean, um, tannins in this tank. Look how clear I've made the water. And yet we're at 635 parts per million total dissolved solids. It just it makes no sense to me. So if we come back around here to my brackish tank, my brackish tank has 7,032 parts per million. That's about what I would expect. That's where it should be sitting. Anything over 1,000 or under 10,000 parts per million is considered brackish. And then anything over 10,000 is considered marine up until 35,000. Anything over 35,000 is considered um, brine. So 7,032 is about what I would expect to see in Butterbean's tank. My little red claw crab tank here, which is also brackish, is 6,748 parts per million. So if you'll remember not long ago I talked about when I scooped all of those guppies out of that one tank and I plopped them into this tank really quickly. They were also in brackish water and their TDS in that tank was over 7,000 parts per million. It was almost 8,000 parts per million uh, total dissolved solids. So when I was saying that they came from really high nitrates into really low nitrates, that was true but they were also in really high levels of total dissolved solids. So while Uri Haline animals can shift um, pretty rapidly, they can't do, you know, they, they can't work magic. So they went from about 8,000 parts per million down to 100 parts per million, and that shock was just too much for them, and I believe it was the osmotic shock, not a nitrate shock, that killed them. And I am going to talk more about nitrate shock uh, in specific. I've just been tinkering around with this this evening and since this is pretty much going to be what I'm doing for the evening I figured I would just grab my camera and chat about it while I was doing it. Um, I'm not really going to have time to do any water changes down here or get any other uh, actual work done but I am curious as to why in the world this one tank down here has such ridiculously high dissolved solids. What is dissolved into the water in this tank that's making those dissolved solids go up so high. Um, after the video is done, I'm going to start testing the hardness again. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to find anything surprising, but, you know, again, at 600 parts per million, if we're talking about magnesium and calcium adding to that, that, that water would clang if it was that hard, if it had that much calcium and magnesium in it. It would be like liquid rocks in there. So... Even if there is some of that, it still wouldn't account for that really high number like that. So what else is being put in this tank that I don't know about? That's going to drive me crazy until I figure out why this tank has such a ridiculously high dissolved solid number. So your thoughts down below. I'd really be interested to hear what you have to say. I'm just I'm puzzled by why the dissolved solids in this tank... Um, you know, that's why I shot the video about it last night when I was doing the water change. I said, let's, you know, let's see what a little before and after, how much I can reduce these dissolved solids. And when I checked, I was like, what? And I, I had to go around and start checking my meter. I checked it in my, my, you know, RO water. I went around and checked a few tanks. I said, that just can't be right. You know, and then, you know, after the water change, it came out to be about where you'd expect after a water change and, you know, so I think my TDS meter's working just fine. I think this tank has 650 parts per million after that water change. So again, your thoughts below. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss any upcoming videos. Whenever I figure out what's going on in this tank, you better believe I will be shooting video talking about it. And I will also be talking about the nitrate shock and osmotic shock and all that stuff in an upcoming video too. So again, make sure you're subscribed. You won't miss any of that. And then, of course, don't forget, this one is my 125-gallon native tank 
And this is the one that we've got the big mystery in. So thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.